Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Okay, so the next, um, you know, accessible data set is the U.S. Department of Agriculture, uh, you know, uh, National Agricultural Statistical Services uh, cropland data layers. Uh, that's in front of your screens. It's called CropScape. Um, and this data set, as you, as you can see right away on, you know, on the left panel, you have different years for which you can, uh, you know, uh, display or visualize this data set. What's on this data set? It says CropScape. So as the name suggests, it's, it is mostly, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, its, its utility is supposed to be the cropland, uh, you know, uh, distribution across the United States. So uh, when we look at this region where my pointer is, when we look at this, uh, this, this region, uh, where you have these yellow and green concentrations. Uh, my pointer is moving. It's going from North Dakota to South Dakota to North, uh, to Nebraska, Iowa, Illinois, uh, Indiana, Ohio, uh, coming back Wisconsin, Minnesota. This is called as the Corn Belt. Um, this is a significant agricultural region in the world. And it is uh, very important to understand how land use uh, decisions are being taken in this world so in this in this area and so you know these data set have a very high utility they are highly cited highly used um, interested students can find thousands of papers uh, you know uh, which, which which use cropscape and 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 given that cropscape was was launched only in 2012 13 so we have we have we have really only had a decade of you know, the, uh, the, the existence of CropScape. CropScape is quite, uh, you know, uh, updates itself quite, quite, you know, uh, frequently. So we have the 2021 data set already available. Uh, so what we can do here is that if I click on 2021 on this radio, I get the land use distribution for the year 2021. So if I go back to 2028, I have, uh, you know, I see that around the Kansas region, you had a lot of these brown pixels or the brownish shade, which disappears or changes in 2021, right? So that's interesting, right? So, so, uh, so, okay, so how does this layer then help us understand the data better? So it also provides us a legend. So the legend is that corn is yellow. You have reds, which are cotton, you see a Around Texas area, you see a lot of cotton. So you see some kind of a regional spe specialization happening in the United States as far as the ag uh, their agriculture is concerned. Rice, they have right. So they have rice. Uh, I see some rice around here in California, right? Then I see some sorghum and soybeans. Soybeans are dark greens. There are a lot of soybeans around here, right? Um, the sorghum is sort of here. The orange shade is here, right? So, so we can see, we can toggle, you know, across different years uh, and, and this data set may take a little bit to load. So, so stay patient uh, with it, all right? So we can do that. And just like in the Bhuvan data set that we saw in the previous lecture, you know, we can also delineate a area of interest. So you can see that I can select a state. I'm gonna just uh, select a, any state. Let's say I select Michigan and I say submit. And this will then draw a area of interest for me uh, by itself. So this is all happening online on your personal computers. You can, you know, as I'm doing it, uh, you can do it as well, right? So it's, it takes a little bit to, to load, but what it really is doing is it's creating this area of interest for me for analysis. So you have different buttons here. You can define your own area of interest, just like we had in case of uh, the Bhuvan uh, data set that we saw previously, uh, we can also import an area of interest, right? So let's say if you have, uh, if you want to study a given national park, 
right? For example, in India, we have the Jim Corbett National Park. Uh, we, if we have a, sh we have a, you know, a, a, a shape file or a file which we can then import online onto this website, it will then draw it for us, you know, a pre-drawn pre polygon that we can source from somewhere else, right? Um, we can clear this, you know, if I click, I can clear this defined area of interest. But what's very interesting is I can then, you know, just like in Bhuvan, I can actually, you know, click and get, you know, uh, uh, the statistics for different crop types or different land use types for my area of interest. So I have corn with value one, which is yellow, right, uh, is, is pixel count this many and acreage this much. Then you have sorghum, not so much acreage, then soybeans, quite a bit of acreage. So clearly in, in Michigan, you have a lot of corn and soybeans and not so much by the way of sorghum. You also have a lot of winter wheat. So you can figure out, you can figure out the spread of uh, different land use types uh, by area, right? You can also download these as a .csv file, right? So this is a very nice utility. You can actually bring this to Excel sheet. You can then bring it back to the image. You can study the image from the Excel sheet. So it's, it gives you a very nice, uh, you know, functionality. We can also draw a pie chart. It's, 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 it's much more sort of um, uh, elaborate here. I can, the pie chart is dynamic. I can actually go over different regions and it'll tell me what's the percentage, what's the crop type, what's the area, what's the percentage and so on and so forth. Similarly, I can also draw a bar chart, which gives me an understanding of what's the area coverage across different types from a pie chart to a bar chart, similar understanding, but here is another functionality, all right? Uh, another very nice, you know, a uh, uh, functionality that, that Cropscape provides uh, is what is called as the change analysis. Under change analysis, for my area of interest, which is the Michigan, uh, you know, state of Michigan in the United States, I can choose or select a reference year. Let's say the reference year was 2008. And I can choose another year, I'm going to choose the latest one, let's say 2021. And this functionality, when I click on submit, will do a change analysis for me. Let's see how what this change analysis looks like. We'll wait for a minute if it works out the statistic that we are trying to, uh, to, to calculate. And by the way, all these statistics, all these functionalities that we are seeing the website do, we will learn to do on a software. So none of these, you know, uh, uh, things that we are doing here, we have to be restricted by a website, but this is just a starting point where I'm just trying to sort of uh, show you what is possible, you know, uh, uh, just by going on a website and studying a data set, right? So what's the extent that is possible? Okay, so now I have a, a column which is called 2008 on the left and a column on 2021 on the right and we have a pixel count, so number of pixels in each category of change and then acreage. So what it's showing me is that alpha alpha, which is a crop type, is going to corn, is this conversion from alpha alpha to corn on 184,000 146 acres, 1,84,146.5 acres have converted from alpha alpha to corn from 2008 to, uh, you know, uh, 2021, which is a really interesting statistic. This tells you the dynamics of how decisions are happening in, in this region, right? And then, you know, we can figure out some other important, uh, you know, uh, land use change categories. So, for example, we can, we can look at, you know, uh, we see that some fallow or idle land in 2008 went into growing winter wheat and about 1,000, uh, 1163 acres went from fallow or idle cropland to winter wheat, right? So, uh, this is a very uh, sort of interesting analysis which you can download, again, as a CSV file, you can study it, you can take it to a statistical software or study just, you know, draw these 
bar graphs, pie charts on Excel. And then, you know, uh, uh, you know, you can then al also export it for a selected crop chain. So I can actually select, I could have selected, you know, alpha, alpha, and then exported that, uh, you know, uh, only. These are very interesting functionalities. So I'm going to, I'm going to let you sort of, you know, uh, uh, work with these functionalities. Uh, you can also swipe these so you, you can have, you know, 2021 and 2008. Um, and you can start to sort of swipe them over each other. You can start to swipe them. You can see the change across on space. So of course, you have a, a tabular understanding that I showed you previously. Uh, it takes a bit of time to load, but you can see that you can actually swipe, you know, 2021 you can see what 2008 was and how 2021 looks, right? So you can see, you, you should be able to see a lot of alpha alpha, which is pink becoming yellow, which is corn, which is what the, the tabular understanding gave us. So I invite you to go ahead and, and, and play with these features on this website and, 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 and do your analysis for yourself, some, some analyses for yourself, right? Okay. So let's go back to a little exercise that we had given ourselves, which is to analyze in uh, an area of interest around the Guwahati metropolitan area. So let's go back to the Bhuvan, uh, you know, land use, land cover data set. So I'm going to again sort of uh, look for land use, land cover 2005-6. And in geography, because I need to go study Guwahati, uh, I know that it's in Assam, so I'm going to I'm going to select. Sam and I'm going to say view. So I'm going to narrow down my interest to this to the area of, you know, uh, uh, that I, I, I need to go and look at. So now, uh, you know, when I look at this map, I can't really tell where is Guwahati. So what I do is I go to my overlay function. And I use under navigational layers, what are called as red if maps. So if you click on red if maps, you will see that we are able to identify a region where we can see Guwahati. We can zoom in a little bit and, and, and narrow down our, re, our search a little bit more further. So here we go. Uh, so on my screen, now you see Guwahati coming out to be this red region, which is, which is encouraging because I know for a fact that Guwahati is a metropolitan urban area. I have the, uh, you know, this is the Brahmaputra River uh, on which the, the city is, 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 is located. And on these red spots are really uh, the good Guwahati metropolitan area. So I now next want to draw an area of interest and, and, and conduct an analysis on this area. So I go to analysis. I say draw AOI, area of interest. And I'm going to draw an AOI, let's say, on the central Guwahati region. Once I've drawn my OI, I'm going to click analyze and you know, it's going to load for a minute, but here we go. So here's an analysis of the land use distribution in my area of interest for the Guwahati metropolitan area. I have about 70% urban land, which is clear in my squared area of interest. You know, I see, uh, you know, the red region is dominating. It's about 70% of what's out there. The second most, you know, uh, 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 dominant region is the scrubland, which are about 21%, which is interesting. So all these lands are, are scrubland. There is also some river. I've taken some river on the uh, northwest corner of my area of interest. I've taken a patch of the river. So this patch is, is less than a percent of my area of interest. So I'm not looking at the river region for my study, right? So the study that I'm conducting, I'm going to conduct with this area of interest, right? So the total area of, in the, of, of, my, of, my, of my polygon that I've drawn is 102.8 uh, square kilometers. And, and interestingly, I can see all the different layers uh, uh, that, that I want to study. I can go back to the overlay function. I can also look at the taluks. If I, if they are available, I'll be able to see uh, if if the Guwahati metropolitan area lies within a particular uh, taluk, right? So you see, you see uh, to be able to see it further. You know, we'll just uh, zoom out a little bit and see if we can, uh, you know, 
delineate different taluks. Yes, we can. So these are the boundaries of taluks, and we see that a taluk, these these white lines are much bigger than the area of interest that I have drawn on this uh, on this figure, right? So you can do different things. You can look at water bodies. You can look at the roads, which roads are available. Uh, you can look at flood hazard in my area in our area of interest, right? You can you can zoom in, zoom out. Uh, if you can change your area of interest, you can go back, refresh the screen and draw a new area of interest, right? Um, uh, you, can, you can look at district-wise statistics. Everything that we looked for, uh, you know, we did for Uttar Pradesh is also possible for the state of Assam. So this, you know, uh, uh, Bhuvan data set provides you a nice functionality all in all, right? And the CropScape data sets. These data sets provide you a very nice functionality to at least begin your analysis, uh, you know, on this web-based server uh, even before you go ahead and do something extensive on, you know, uh, uh, on your software or, you know, anything else. We will, on the other hand, actually learn to do these things by scratch, right? We, we don't have to rely on this web server. We can take the data, we can conduct, we can create all this analysis and even more, much, much more, if we learn how to do these, uh, you know, on, on, on software like ArcGIS or R and so on and so forth. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention. Please, uh, you know, uh, 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 work on these data sets. Please, uh, you know, uh, uh, visualize them, uh, you know, uh, use them for different purposes so that uh, you have a, an understanding of how, you know, the raster data sets look like, what is a vector, you know, and so on and so forth. Okay, thank you so much for your attention. Mm -hmm.